Hi friends, it's Miss Kathy from the Mary L. Cook Public Library. Welcome to Storytime. I'm here in the library gardens today and have you noticed the castle that's behind me? Maybe it's the castle from the story Jack and the Beanstalk. Who knows? Have you heard that story before? Well, I thought this would be the perfect place for our fairy tale story time. We're going to enjoy some favorite fairy tales and do some activities together. So if you're ready, open and shut them, open and shut them, give a little clap, clap, clap. Open and shut them, open and shut them, fold them in your lap, lap, lap. Well, let's get ready for our first story, The Gingerbread Man. The Gingerbread Man, adapted by Mara Alperin, illustrated by Miriam Latimer, published by Tiger Tales. Mr. and Mrs. Baker lived all alone. Day after day, they baked big gooey cakes, sweet crumbly pies, and piping hot pastries. But they had no one to share them with, and that made them very sad. Then one day, Mrs. Baker made a little gingerbread man to cheer them both up. He had jolly jelly buttons and a big icing smile. Dusting the flour from her hands, she popped him into the oven. But to Mr. and Mrs. Baker's surprise, when the tray came out, the gingerbread man leaped up onto the table and began skipping through the sugar. Tee hee hee, you can't catch me, he giggled. Bless my cinnamon stars, cried Mrs. Baker, as they chased him over pots, under pans, and all around the kitchen. But the gingerbread man was too quick for them, and he jumped right out the window. Scurrying along the path, the gingerbread man ran into a very hungry cow. You look tasty, mooed the cow, and what fine jelly buttons you have. But the gingerbread man just danced and pranced, singing, Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. And off he ran, as fast as his gingerbread legs could carry him. With a great moo, the cow thundered after the gingerbread man, past the milk churns, through the barn, and around and around the haystack, until... Crash! The haystack tumbled over right on top of the cow. Oh, milkshakes! cried the very dizzy cow. The gingerbread man scampered up the hill. At the top was a very hungry goat. Good day, bleated the goat. I love munching thistles, but you look even better to eat. But the gingerbread man just whirled and twirled, singing, Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. And off he zoomed, leaving a trail of gingerbread crumbs behind him. So the goat dashed after the gingerbread man, through the thistles, over the gate, in and out of the apple orchard, until... Smash! The goat butted right into a tree, and the apples came toppling down with a thud, thud, thud. Oh, applesauce, cried the goat, rubbing his head. Tee hee hee, laughed the gingerbread man as he frolicked through the meadow. There, dozing in a tree, was a very hungry cat. Hello, meowed the cat. You look like the perfect snack. But the gingerbread man just wiggled and giggled, singing, Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. And off he whooshed racing down the lane. Licking her lips, the cat chased the gingerbread man around the bush, 
through the daisies and toward the pond. The cat leaped up, 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 and came down, down, splash, right in the middle of the cold, wet pond. Oh, whiskers, grumbled the very soggy cat. As the gingerbread man ran down the hill, he began to laugh and sing. Tee-hee-hee, I'm having fun. I've run away from everyone. A curly-haired woman, a man in a hat, a cow and a goat and a silly old cat. But when the gingerbread man reached the river bank, he stopped and shivered. Brr, too cold. How do I cross? Just then a fox appeared. Hello, little gingerbread man, he grinned. Maybe I can help you. Just climb on my tail and I'll carry you across. Brr, too chilly, the gingerbread man squealed as the fox paddled into the river. Then why don't you climb onto my back, asked the fox. Brr, too wet, squeaked the gingerbread man as the water swirled at his feet. Climb onto my head, smirked the fox, and the gingerbread man scrambled up. But the water rose higher still, so the gingerbread man climbed to the top of the fox's nose. Tee hee hee, they'll never catch me, he cried, just as the fox tossed up the gingerbread man up up, up in the air and opened his mouth wide. Snap! And that was the end of the gingerbread man. Oh dear, sighed Mrs. Baker. What a naughty gingerbread man he was. I'm still hungry, mooed the cow. Me too, bleated the goat. So am I, meowed the cat. Then Mr. Baker said, let's all go and bake something else together. So they all trotted back to the bakery to mix and stir cakes and pastries and pies, but no more gingerbread men. It was a fantastic feast, and with their three new friends, Mr. and Mrs. Baker were never lonely again. Well, our first activity goes along with the story that you just heard about the gingerbread man. I have my magnet board here and we're going to do five little gingerbread men. So here we are, let's count them before we start. One, two, three, four, five. So we're going to count down from five to then at the end, no little little gingerbread are going to be left. So five little gingerbread men lying on a tray. One is going to jump up and run away, shouting, catch me, catch me, catch me if you can. I'm really quick. I'm the gingerbread man. And then we'll count down from four, three, two, one, and then no gingerbread men left. All right, let's see if we can do it together. Five little gingerbread men lying on a tray. One jumped up and ran away, shouting, catch me, catch me, catch me if you can. I'm really quick. I'm the gingerbread man. Four little gingerbread men lying on a tray. One jumped up and ran away shouting, catch me, catch me, catch me if you can. I'm really quick. I'm the gingerbread man. How many do we have left? Three, you are right. Three little gingerbread men lying on a tray. One jumped up and ran away, shouting, catch me, catch me, catch me if you can. I'm really quick. I'm the gingerbread man. Two little gingerbread men lying on a tray. One jumped up and ran away, shouting, catch me, catch me, catch me if you can. 
I'm really quick. I'm the gingerbread man. How many do we have left? That's right. One little gingerbread man lying on a tray. He jumped up and ran away, shouting, catch me, catch me, catch me if you can. I'm really quick. I'm the gingerbread man. No more gingerbread men lying on the tray. They all jumped up and ran away. Oh, how I wish they had stayed with me to play. Next time I'll eat them before they run away. Great job with your counting down. Well, let's get ready for our next story. Three Billy Goats Gruff. Retold and illustrated by Glenn Rounds. Published by Holiday House. Once on a time, there were three billy goats. One was very small, one was middle-sized, and one was very large. They were all named Gruff, so people simply called them the three billy goats Gruff. On a certain morning, the three billy goats Gruff were on their way to a distant hillside where the grass was especially tall and green and tender. But to get to the hillside, they had to cross a bridge over a deep, swift river. And under that bridge lived a great, big, ugly troll. The smallest billy goat gruff had just started across the bridge. Trip trap, trip trap, trip trap when the troll roared from below. Who's that tripping across my bridge? It's only me, the smallest billy goat gruff, the little billy goat answered in his tiny voice. I'm going over to yonder hillside where the grass is so tall and green and tender. No, you're not, roared the troll, because I'm going to eat you up. Oh, no, cried the billy goat. Please don't eat me up. I'm much too small to make a meal for you. Wait for the second billy goat gruff. He's much bigger than I am. Well, maybe you're right, growled the troll. So be off with you. And he went back down under the bridge while the little billy goat ran to the green hillside beyond. Then the second billy goat gruff started across the bridge. Trip trap, trip trap, trip trap. And again the troll roared, Who's tripping across my bridge? It's me, the second billy goat gruff. But please don't eat me. The biggest billy goat gruff is right behind me, and he is much bigger. Well, growled the troll, get on with you. I'll wait for the big one. So the second billy goat ran safely across the bridge and to the green hillside beyond. Then the biggest billy goat stamped onto the bridge. Trip trap, trip trap, trip trap. And again the troll roared in his loudest voice, Who's that tramping over my bridge? It's me, the biggest billy goat gruff shouted the billy goat in a voice almost as loud as the trolls. Whoever you are, I'm going to eat you up right now, roared the troll, and he climbed on to the top of the bridge. Well, come on then, cried the big billy goat. I've got sharp horns to butt you with and hard hooves to trample you with. That's what the big billy goat said. Then the big billy goat ran at the troll, and the troll ran at the billy goat. The big billy goat butted the ugly troll with his hard horns and trampled him with his sharp hooves. Then he butted him again and knocked him off the bridge and into the deep, swift river below. The big billy goat stomped on across the bridge and on to the hillside where the grass was so tall and green and tender. 
the great ugly troll was never seen again. And if the three billy goat scruff haven't gone away, they are still on that hillside getting fatter every day. And now as grandmother used to say, snip, snap, snout, this tale's told out. Well, it's time to get some wiggles out. So if you wanna stand up right where you are at home, we're going to do a finger play that goes along with the fairy tale that you just heard, Three Billy Goats Gruff. So we're going to need to hold up three fingers. These fingers will start in front, and then these are our three billy goats. Then they're gonna hide when they see that troll, and then they're gonna pop back up at the end of the finger play. So it starts out with trip trap, trip trap. You may remember that from the story. Billy goats three. That's when we'll hold up our three fingers. Hide by the bridge. So we'll put them behind us where the troll can't see. When the troll walks by, they jump up. So you'll bring them back around to the front. They jump up and say, leave us alone. So the troll runs away. All right, those are the motions. They're pretty simple. And those are the words. So let's do our rhyme together. Trip trap, trip trap, Billy goats three. Hide by the bridge so the troll can't see. When the troll walks by, they jump up and say, leave us alone, so the troll runs away. Great job. Well, we're ready for our last fairy tale, Little Red Riding Hood. Little Red Riding Hood, retold by Burnett Ford, published by Storyhouse Books. Once upon a time, a little girl lived with her mother at the edge of the forest. Everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood because her grandmother had made her a little red cape and hood, and she loved it. In fact, she never took it off. One sunny day, Little Red Riding Hood's mother handed her a basket full of baked goodies. Take this basket to Grandma, said Mother. She isn't feeling well, and these treats will help make her feel better. Yes, Mother, I will, said Little Red Riding Hood. Now don't stop to talk to any strangers, said Mother, and don't dilly-dally along the way. No, Mother, I won't, said Little Red Riding Hood, and off she went. Now Red Riding Hood's grandmother lived all the way on the other side of the forest. It was a long walk but there was a lot to look at along the way. There were birds and bunnies and chipmunks, and there were many lovely wildflowers. Little Red Riding Hood wished she could stop and smell the flowers beside the path, but she had promised her mother not to dilly-dally, so she hurried on. Before long, who should slink out of the woods? but a big, bad, wicked old wolf. He stopped Red Riding Hood on the path. Since she had never seen a wolf before, she wasn't afraid. Where are you going, little Red Riding Hood, and why are you going so fast? asked the wolf. I'm on my way to Grandma's house on the other side of the forest, said Red Riding Hood. She had forgotten her promise not to talk to any strangers. I'm taking her this basket of goodies to help her feel better. But there are so many flowers here, said the wolf. I bet your grandma would love a bouquet. You really ought to stop and pick a pretty bunch for her. That's a great idea, exclaimed Little Red Riding Hood. She set down her basket and began picking wildflowers. She had forgotten her promise not to dilly-dally along the way. The wolf already had a plan to have her for his lunch. As soon as Red Riding Hood stopped by the path, the wicked old wolf ran ahead to Grandma's cottage as fast as he could. Then he knocked on her door. Who's there? Grandma called from inside. The wolf answered in a voice as sweet as honey. It's Little Red Riding Hood, Grandma. 
I've brought you a surprise. When Grandma opened the door, the wicked old wolf pounced. He swallowed her whole in one big gulp. Then he put on her glasses and night clothes and jumped into her bed. He pulled the covers up under his chin and waited for Little Red Riding Hood. Before too long, Little Red Riding Hood knocked on the door. Who's there? called the wolf in a voice like Grandma's. It's Little Red Riding Hood, she called. I brought a surprise for you. Open the door and come in, dear said the wolf in his best grandmothery voice. Little Red Riding Hood tiptoed into the cottage. Although it was a little dim inside, she could see that her grandmother looked a bit strange. Why, Grandma, what big eyes you have, she said. The better to see you with, my dear, said the wolf in a voice like her grandmother's. And Grandma, what big ears you have said Red Riding Hood. The better to hear you with, my dear, said the wolf in Grandma's voice. And Grandma, what big teeth you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. The better to eat you with, my dear, snarled the wolf, and he jumped out of bed to pounce on Little Red Riding Hood. At that very moment, a strong young woodsman was passing by, and he heard the commotion. He broke down the door with his axe just in time to stop the wicked old wolf and knock him out. Then the woodsman zipped open his stomach, and there was Grandma safe and sound. Little Red Riding Hood gave her grandmother a big hug. After they all had shared the baked goodies, the strong young woodsman took Little Red Riding Hood home to her mother. Red Riding Hood promised never, ever to dilly-dally or talk to strangers again. And they all lived happily ever after. Well, we have time for one last activity. So if you want to stand up right where you are at home, you will notice that Mr. Len has joined us. And we're going to do an old rhyme. Maybe you've heard it before called the Grand Old Duke of York. It has a few motions. And the fun part is that we get to do it three times and get a little faster each time. So it starts like this. The Grand Old Duke of York... He had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. When they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. When they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. So those are the words, those are the motions, and we'll start out just at regular speed to begin. The Grand Old Duke of York He had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. When they were up, they were up. When they were down, they were down. When they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. All right, it's time to go a little faster. Oh, the Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. When they were up, they were up. When they were down, they were down. When they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. Last time, super fast this time. Oh, the Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. When they were up, they were up. When they were down, they were down. When they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. Great job and good marching. Well, I hope that you enjoyed listening to the fairy tales and doing our activities together. I am so glad that I got to share these old stories with you. And if you would like to read more fairy tales like The Three Little Pigs or Goldilocks and the Three Bears or Hansel and Gretel, please call Miss Kathy at the library and she'll gather a bundle of books together for you. Our curbside hours are Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Or if you would like to pick out some fairy tales for yourself, 
your parents can call and make an appointment to browse. We would love to see you. Well, it's time to tickle the clouds, tickle your toes, turn around, and tickle your nose. Reach down low, reach up high, story time's over. So wave goodbye.